Stevie Ray Vaughan was a popular blues musician who died well before his time. He made a name for himself as a blues guitarist at a time when blues wasn't all that popular, but his charisma paved the way for a blues revival. Sadly, his meteoric rise to the top was halted when he passed away in a tragic helicopter accident. Join Faxverse as new details of Stevie Ray Vaughan's helicopter crash change everything. Stevie Ray Vaughan's Untimely End Music fans were taken aback when the death of blues guitarist Stevie Ray Vaughan was announced in the summer of 1990. He'd only been a figure in the music scene for around a decade and was just recently starting to find mainstream success. Not only was Stevie's star on the rise, but the musician had also recently given up drugs and alcohol. He had been plagued by substance abuse issues during his early touring years and became more popular than ever once he set them aside. Stevie spent the last years of his life making rock and roll music that preached about the values of living a clean and sober lifestyle. While this message might have seemed cheesy coming from anyone else, Stevie had the musical chops to keep people invested. No one knows what might have waited for Stevie in the future if it hadn't been for the tragic 1990 helicopter crash that ended his life. He was only 35 and was just starting to reap the rewards of his years of hard work. The crash occurred in Wisconsin, where Stevie was performing with elder blues legend Eric Clapton. For many years, the details of the helicopter crash that killed Stevie Ray Vaughan remained a mystery to the public. However, a lawyer who worked on the case has recently come forward with details showing exactly what caused the helicopter to crash. In addition to Stevie Ray Vaughan, the helicopter that crashed was also carrying other people. One was a man named Bobby Brooks, who was Eric Clapton's manager. Bobby had a very large estate, and his surviving family members were adamant about getting justice. Because of this, Bobby's estate hired pretty expensive lawyers to try to sue whoever was responsible for the crash. The man who ended up getting to the bottom of the reasoning behind the helicopter crash was a lawyer working for the manufacturer of some of the helicopter's parts. Other parties being sued included the business responsible for organizing the flight. The helicopter that crashed was one of four that took off from the same location at the same time, with the other three containing Eric Clapton and other members of his entourage. The surviving family members wanted answers. Stevie Ray Vaughan's brother and his brother's wife were supposed to fly on the helicopter with Stevie, but there wasn't enough room. That meant the pair thankfully survived. However, like much of the public, they were desperate for answers about who was responsible. As the lawsuits were underway, it was eventually revealed which party was responsible. However, much of the public was not given the opportunity to find out until decades later. Now it's finally clear who was responsible for the accident that killed Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan and his brother Jimmy both started out as guitarists in Texas. Stevie was the more talented of the two, but that didn't mean Jimmy didn't know what he was doing. Jimmy Ray Vaughan is still alive and is 71. In addition to being known as Stevie Ray Vaughan's brother, he's also known for his work with the band The Fabulous Thunderbirds. Both Jimmy and Stevie were blues musicians to their core, which made them think it was unlikely they'd ever find mainstream popularity. However, they quickly became legends in their home state of Texas. It wasn't until the 1980s that one of them finally managed to break into the mainstream. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Stevie Overcame Substance Abuse Issues Soon after breaking out, Stevie Ray Vaughan fell victim to the excessive and debaucherous rock and roll lifestyle. His talent on the guitar wasn't enough to keep him safe from the dangers of the industry, and things got worse for the musician until he was finally forced to take a trip to rehab in the mid-80s. He was far from the first rock musician to be in rehab by that time, and stints in rehab weren't known for being successful in the long term, but Stevie's ended up being one of the few rock and roll rehab success stories. When he came out, he seemed completely different although he was clearly still a virtuoso on guitar. His big break had come in 1982, when he was given the chance to perform at the Montreux Jazz Festival. Stevie's blues playing put off many attendees there. Still, the majority fell in love with the guitarist for his passion and technical ability. His appearance led to him getting a record deal, and he went on to tour the world over the course of the next few years. He was in Europe when it became clear his substance abuse was becoming an issue. He suffered a mental breakdown on stage in 1986, and this is what resulted in the guitarist going to rehab. 
Following his successful stint in rehab, he went on to release the most successful album of his career. That was 1989's In Step, which Stevie and his band were touring in support of in the days leading up to his tragic death. The title of the album referred to the 12 Steps of AA, which was how Stevie got sober. The album was a massive success, despite featuring songs espousing the message of staying clean and sober, which wasn't very popular in rock and roll at the time. Stevie's final night was one to remember. Stevie Ray Vaughan's tour in support of the album In Step ended with a two-night gig opening up for Eric Clapton. The helicopter crash that killed Stevie occurred after the second night. On the final night, he got to play alongside Eric Clapton on stage, as well as Robert Cray and Buddy Guy. Stevie's brother Jimmy was also part of the performance, and all the musicians being on stage together was quite the sight to behold. Both of the performances sold out, and the 40,000 people in attendance each night certainly got a show. After the incredible performance they gave on the second night, Eric and his entourage were supposed to fly to Chicago, and Stevie went with them. Four helicopters took off, but only three made it to Chicago. It was later revealed the helicopter carrying Stevie had crashed almost immediately after takeoff, killing everyone aboard. What caused the helicopter crash? The four helicopters took off from a parking lot, and the helicopter carrying Stevie crashed into a hill a short distance away. There was no clear reason why the pilot would have been heading straight into a hill, so it was assumed the incident had been caused by a mechanical issue. This is where the lawyer who solved the case came in. He ended up figuring out it wasn't a mechanical issue that had been at fault, but a lack of proper experience from the helicopter's pilot. The pilot wasn't licensed to operate the aircraft in conditions that required him to use radar displays. It was discovered the pilot responsible for the crash had been blinded by the lights of the parking lot that the four helicopters had taken off from. The pilots in the other three helicopters were all licensed to use radar displays, so they were able to maneuver their aircrafts despite losing visibility. Because of this, they made the journey safely, while the helicopter containing Stevie crashed shortly after takeoff. At the end of the day, it was the business that organized the helicopter flight that was held responsible for the crash, and they settled out of court with the victim's surviving family members for an undisclosed amount. Though the surviving family members eventually got justice, the world was still deprived of a legendary blues guitarist. Stevie Ray Vaughan was mourned, though the true story of what caused the helicopter crash that killed him remained a mystery for many years. Now fans finally know the truth. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Stevie Ray Vaughan song? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.